Everybody, good morning and happy Wednesday, midday, midweek, I mean, hump day, almost midday, uh, April 3rd, into the into the swing of a new month. It's good. Vibes are good. Uh, we got a fun stuff today. Veggie Awards have been released. I'm sure everyone's wondering if their vote that they cast for Plant Based Morning Show paid off. Um, I'm not going to give any hints whether we made it or didn't, and uh, but, but we'll, we'll see. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, also got... Uh, this thing we talked about yesterday, this, this, there's a new book out. I think it's called The Anxious uh, the Anxious Generation. And it is about the idea, the claim that social media is is making children unhappy. And it is the main primary cause of doing that. Uh, but there are some objections. There's people who do not agree with that at all. Um, and it, science comes out on an interesting side. So we'll get into that in a bit. In the meantime, Doug, how are things going today? I see you got your artisan mug there. Is that acquired from the Black Mountain Farmer's Market? No, this was a gift uh, <laughs> from the Black Mountain Farmers Market. No, this was a gift from uh, from my dad. I think it's from wow. Louisville. Very nice. Louisville. Louisville will be featured later uh, in the Veg News Awards, the Veggie Ooh. Awards. A the spoiler. award that has, uh, has eluded me throughout my 15-year my career now. Could this be the year? White Whale, this could be the year that, that I finally get it. <laughs> uh, I'm doing well, Matt. I'm doing pretty well. I, I got to say, I am... Uh, I'm a little tired. I'm a little tired. Oh, yeah. And I, so, uh, two nights ago, yesterday, Monday night, um, I was up a lot of the night dealing with uh, a, a kid with a stomach bug. One of your uh, kids? That's not just a random A kid, but one of yours, right? One of my, yeah, one of my kids with some uh, stomach issues, which I won't go into too many details, but you know, it's like, it's by far the least, my least favorite part about being a parent is, uh, is middle of the night, yeah, having to change sheets and clean kids and deal with vomit. Yeah, um, for sure. <laughs> not good. But uh, <laughs> but uh, so so that was two nights ago. And yesterday, I was actually feeling really good. I was feeling I don't know. I, even though it was a terrible night's sleep, I was just maybe had a little bit more coffee than normal and uh, mm -hmm. was kind of riding that energy level, that um, adrenaline level. Today, though, man, I even got a decent night's sleep. Not a great night, but decent night's sleep last night, and I am dragging. Yeah, that's that happens, and I don't – you never know how to explain it. There are days when – I feel like there was a certain room in our old house when we lived in Asheville where if I slept in my daughter's room for whatever reason, like spent the night in her room, even if she wasn't there, if it was just I had to sleep there for whatever reason, I would just wake up feeling so drained of energy even when I thought I slept the whole night. And mm. so I just always wonder what, what actually causes that. Because there are days when you can get very little sleep and feel great. Uh, so who knows? Unknown what that would be. If you, had a, if you had a good aura ring, Doug, maybe you could look at some metrics and say, is my body temperature a little high? Am I fighting something off? Yeah. My resting maybe. heart rate, my heart rate variability, was that different? Am I not recovered from that uh, brick run I did, brick workout a couple of days could ago? Be. Could be. I also ran last that. night, which I don't do very much these days. I ran like right before bed. So that could be mm -hmm. part of it. But you don't want that data. You don't want that that data feed in your life. No, why would I want that data? What am I going to do with that? What What am I going to do with the fact that my heart rate was elevated last night? Or, or uh, well, you, know, you can I didn't take it easy now. You can start saying that I'm, I might be getting sick. I'm going to not do the exercise that I had planned. Mm. Give myself a little extra TLC. I Maybe. mean, there are things we could do with it. I don't. I, that's. I don't think people have really figured that out yet. Because you don't want to just listen to the ring when it tells you you're you're not well when you feel fine. Right. I don't know. It's a good it's a good point. What are, what do you actually do with the data? I think people and, I and think people much, are trying right, to so give yourself a little TLC. Like how much does that really matter? Is that really gonna make you uh fight off an illness, you know? Yeah, but maybe. you can tell Katie you can be like, I can't do anything today. I can't <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, all right. That's her. that's a good that's a good thing to do. Yeah. The ring <laughs> the ring tells me I need to rest today. Sorry. To handle, <laughs> <laughs> handle the kids. Yeah. I mean, that, that that's that's a benefit. Sure. Yeah. Well, I've been wearing my aura ring recently, ever since. Actually, I don't know. I don't know when I started caring about sleep again. I think it was when I started sleeping really badly recently. But I've been great recently. I'm, I'm still been in this weird, like compressed six hours of sleep most nights, but with very little wake ups. And I, I'm doing really well with that. I, I like when I can sleep a little more. It's good, but it's it's hard. I'm just not. Do you sleep well? You're you're visiting your mom right now. Do you sleep well at your mom's? Uh, no, not particularly. It's okay. I did all right last night. I think because I was so exhausted from the Disney World day. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, good morning to people who are here. Uh, Leslie Knight, Dale Stevens, Anne Marie, Carmen, who just catching up on the April Fool's episode. 
D1 to know adventure coach, Allie, Mr. Jeffrey, and Vegan Stallion has checked in and says, I use an app that tells me whether I'm ready to train. It takes into account all my Apple health data, sleep data, heart rate variability, etc. It is based on sound science. I mean, that's kind of a ballsy move just to say, I'm putting it in the hands of the machine. Mm -hmm. I'm, just gonna, I'm only going to do what it says. I'm not going to. I'm not going to train if it says I'm not ready. It, it's nice that it kind of uh, uh, outsources your your health thing. So like it's just it's really nice to get told I don't have to do anything today. Right. I feel I don't feel the whole day about I'm not doing anything. <laughs> the app is that I what if it tells you you do need to do something? Then you and you don't feel like it, you know, and you have to do it. The app yeah. tells you. You just have to. Right. You have to do it. So I mean, so last night I went on. Um, I don't know if you remember. You ran this race, Black Mountain Monster. It's a 5k loop race timed uh like a 6 12 or 24 hour race um, yep. where you run the loop as many times as you can and over the course of a right of that time frame. the race you once won the 24 hour race. i, I won it win. and um and uh, a friend of mine is running it in a couple weeks and so uh we went out last night we ran the course i was showing him the loop because it's rather confusing always um, the same loop uh, it's slightly different but it's same as what i i ran the six hour last year same as that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But uh, we were talking about the strategy is so different than uh, a typical 100 mile. He's trying to, to cover 100 miles um, because you can just remove all the decision making. You can say, all right, I'm going to walk between these two trees on this little hill and I'm going to run everything right. else or I'm going to um, stop, you know, at this amount of time, every lap and no more than that and eat and I'm, or I'm going to skip every lap. You can just remove all the decision making from it. Uh, yep. So then you're just kind of like in autopilot and running your race. And I guess you could do the same for your whole training, for your whole life, really, with technology these days. You can kind of. Yeah. Right. I mean, you, with heart rate, right, like we talked about the other day, your your friend who was running the marathon with a heart rate monitor. Yeah. Uh, you can just say, I, I will not go above this heart rate no matter what happens. And I'm just going to stay there. And that's my zone. And I don't have to make any choices about how fast to go or anything. I'm just going to go up to that heart rate and no further. And if it turns out the plan was bad, so be it. But I'm not going to make decisions during the race. That's a good thing if it means you get to uh, not make decisions when you're in a state when you're not maybe very good at making decisions. Like in the right. first half of a marathon, it's very easy to make a bad decision and just go too fast. So I kind of like that idea. Yeah. Offload. I don't know. I was I was hating on it the other day, but maybe yeah, you were. You were. Yeah. yeah, it feels like technology's getting there, but I just don't. I, don't, I still don't yeah. trust that kind of stuff to know when I'm ready to work out and all that. I don't know. All right. Well, uh, let's get into our weather report today. Oh, and hey, then, before we do, I want to yeah. give, uh, I'm not going to call out names because I've, I've forgotten. I was going to look it up. But shout outs to everybody who left nice comments on YouTube yesterday. Were, were there had, nice comments? Yeah, we had several, several people do that. So thank you. All right. Good. Well, I look forward to that. When I put the show up later, I will read yeah. some nice things. I'm sure there'll be a bad apple in there too. But I I'll, remember uh, in particular, Big Media X Claus went to multiple videos and left some. Uh, oh, that's good. Good, nice comments. Very nice. Well, that is much appreciated. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, reminder also that we have Carly on tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what time she'll be joining, but uh, the plan is for her to be on the show. So that'll be a good time. Carly Bodrug, who you'll hear about in the Veggie Awards as a nice runner up in something. And... Man, just all kinds of spoilers today. <laughs> <laughs> and she's got her new book, uh, Scrappy Cooking, out. So don't That's forget right. to go buy that. It's a good book. All right. Uh, here we go. Still no music. No, no sound machine today on this trip that I am on uh, down to Florida. I come back today, by the way, after this show. Um, I'm not prepared. Okay, here we go. Uh, update the vegan, the, the supposedly vegan tiramisu that killed somebody. They're calling it the killer vegan tiramisu. Uh, killed a 20-year-old woman uh, in Italy who ate it. She was highly allergic, and she ate something that was labeled vegan. Um it was she got a uh, she got a tiramisu. It contained traces of mascarpone cheese. She was reassured by the people. She read the label. She was reassured by the people at the restaurant. This is fine, uh, but they're going to trial now. The trial isn't so much about the restaurant. It's it's against the the family firm that produced the dessert that supplied the restaurant. They're called GLG SRL. Must be an Italian uh, acronym. But it's a mother and I think it's a no. I think it's a, well. It's two family members. I forget exactly who they are. Um, but anyway, uh, in addition to to going to the hospital and dying from this mascarpone cheese thing that was in the tiramisu, they also found traces of the egg of egg in the supposedly eggless mayonnaise that she was eating, 
And I don't know if that was supplied by the same company. I don't think so. Uh, but they are saying this is uh, this is manslaughter. They're saying it was it was some kind of premeditation. Uh, I mean, I, was like I pulled. I didn't do a good job of pulling this story because I had had other information that I don't have now. Uh, but yeah, there were there was like a they have they have a conversation between these two family members, and they're calling this thing uh, it is manslaughter. But somehow, like, I mean, I don't know. Manslaughter means accidental. But if they're using a if they're looking at a previous conversation they had, then like there must have been not a premeditated murder, but like maybe some kind of negligence that basically said, Hey, we don't, we're not going to care that much about the allergies or, you know, whatever it's fine. Just do it. Even if it has traces. So there's something, some bit of evidence like that, that they're using. Um, so, so do they know that the Tiramisu and not the egg? Yeah. I wondered about that. I don't know how they exactly know that. Uh, but I, maybe, maybe the egg allergy wasn't the problem. Maybe she's known to have yeah. a, Okay. Have a dairy allergy more likely. Uh, they said that the the people, and again, the article was a little confusing about whether it was talking about the restaurant or the company, but they said um, that it, the people who worked there only had a four hour training session about vegan versus you know different things, and apparently they weren't really treating this as an allergy. They just kind of thought vegan means you know people don't want to eat the animals, so uh, mm. or the animal products, so it, they didn't realize it was such a concern. And some of the staff. Again, I don't know whether it was the supplier or the restaurant, but some of the staff didn't even really know what vegan was when they were asked about it later. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess people need to pay more attention to vegan labels because because <laughs> it is. They had a four-hour course on veganism. Probably on food allergies and different food allergies. things like this. I mean, that, yeah. that seems that seems pretty good, honestly. <laughs> like, I it can't. Does, right? How long do you want to spend on that? Right? How? I mean, how how much could you go over? That seems like a lot of time for not that much information. Yeah. And I can I just, uh, I, I, that surprised me that that's even like a thing. I would imagine most restaurants don't do that. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I mean, it could have been the supplier. I don't, I don't know. Who knows? Like, it's mm -hmm. not a great article that we had there. Uh, all right. And the other news, Doug, 55 members of the U.S. Congress. Well, does that include you, Doug? <laughs> collectively urge president joe biden you're not a u.s congressman i'm not a u.s congressman no no okay. are, you, are you considered a state congressman given that you're a town council member <laughs> no not a state congressman yet. No. Okay. No. Uh, council member. well Local your colleagues at the, at the congress have uh have collectively urged president joe biden to expand the availability of plant-based food within federal facilities across the nation um they are talking mainly about the carbon footprint print and the nutritional health of Americans. Um, yeah, so they wanted to add museums to national parks, from federal agency cafeterias to military bases. They want them to be more like Disney World, where there's always a good vegan option. Uh, although I don't know if that vegan option makes your health any better, the one at the Disney World. So I don't know if they're going to make it healthy or not. But So I like this. I w I, it's kind of surprising me that it would have to come down from Joe Biden, although maybe, or from the president, but uh, but maybe, maybe they can just... Uh, bypass all the other you know mm -hmm. all the other departments and things like that by just <laughs> decreeing that they have to do it uh, you know but i would imagine that whoever's in charge of uh of of the cafeteria the food supply at different federal agencies can just can just do this without presidential um right right but if you go right to the top first you can just get a nice sweeping get it yeah order that has to make that yeah I don't know. What do you think? Didn't they do this in uh, England? And uh, wasn't that something they? Uh, yeah, there was something like that. Some, some kind of royal knights of the round table meeting right? where they had mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I I think this is good. I, of course, I like this. It's it's nice. It's nice for me if I were attending a government function. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, should the, I, I guess like this is a budgeting issue? Does tax mayor? It didn't have to cost more, right? You can just take away some of the other mm -hmm. options and just mm -hmm. spread it around a little bit more. I don't know. I guess it should be representative of the population, maybe. So if three percent of us are vegan, there should be three percent of the choices should be vegan choices. No, no, no. That's, <laughs> that's not the point. No. <laughs> that's not the point. That is the point, I think. No, the point sure is, uh, is, is, uh, is for environmental reasons and uh, and health reasons, right? Oh, I thought just being fair to everybody. No. <laughs> My guess is that a lot of this is uh, in paid cafeterias too, so it's not even a budgetary thing. Mm. Is this, is this a large number of meals that are served like this? I guess it might be. Like all so. the government employees every day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm I am sure that the State Department, I'm sure all of the main buildings have their own cafeteria. 
Yeah, I have no problem with this. I mean, if, if they were obligating people you had to eat this plant-based food, then I'd say, I don't know if that's so good. Even yeah. if it is good for the environment, that seems like a stretch. But to give people options to do the thing that is good for the planet or for their health or whatever it is, the animals, uh, good. I like all that. Glad to hear that. The wheels yeah. of government, wheels of democracy. This is good. This is what democracy is good for. Making this kind of change happen. <laughs> that's right. Are you going to go out and protest until they, until they pass, <laughs> until he does it? Until they do it. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I will make my voice heard. All right. That's it. That's the weather report. Very short today. Not that much. Uh, we, we teased this social media thing. There's this new book out. It's called The Anxious Generation. It's by Jonathan Haidt, who wrote The Coddling of the American Mind, co-wrote it. Uh, and as we said before, this is like supposed to be a controversial thing, but on the surface, it doesn't seem controversial at all. He's, he's basically saying the subtitle of this book, which is out now, is how the great rewiring of childhood is causing an epidemic of mental illness. Uh, and they point to these stats that show big bump in uh, in anxiety prevalence, and I believe in self harm slash suicide rates, especially among children, uh, and and just depression in general. And a lot of it seemed to jump uh, in 2012 or so. And they're saying what happened before that 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 caused this. Uh, one of the obvious things is that that's when smartphones became ubiquitous. I don't know what the numbers were, but I at some other point. In the past, I saw a stat that showed that this bump very, very neatly coincided with like the point when maybe more than half of Americans has now had a smartphone or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so easy to point fingers and say that it's that. Um, and that's what this book does. Is it is it basically does that, tries to underpin it with some good science um, and and a lot of stories. That's one of the criticisms basically is that, that like, there's no doubt this book's gonna sell a lot of copies, uh, but it may just be because the guy's a good storyteller and he's not a child psychologist or whatever doesn't really have the credentials to sort of um authoritatively say this but he's you know he's being an author and he's looking and he's researching and doing stuff yeah. and and he's painting this picture so, so there's, I, let's i'm putting the charts up on the screen here so people can look okay. at because it it's pretty striking right yeah. like that that increase yeah. um especially in anxiety and depression and then if you go down and look by age group you know it's really this 18 to 25 age group that's getting hit the worst yeah, 140 percent um, increase in anxiety since uh, 2010. So that's like almost almost two and a half times what you had before, because uh, 100 percent would be a, a doubling. And then the next age group down is about 100 percent, or next age group up, sorry, is 100 mm percent. -hmm. And then the the Gen Xers, I guess, is would be ages 35 to 49, where we are, Doug. Although you're, you tell me you're a millennial, right? No, I'm a I'm Gen X. Oh, you are Gen X too. Okay. Uh, anyway, they 52% increase. That's still a decent bump in, uh, in anxiety. Or am I a millennial? And then just, what's that? I might be a millennial. I think I'm like at the very end of Gen X. I kind of thought you were a millennial, but I don't I know. think I am too, actually. I'm 86. Whatever. Yeah. They don't, they don't have it on here, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's millennial. Um, interesting that the 50 plus age group has had an 8% decrease since 2010 in anxiety. And this isn't just like they don't take a cohort and like track these 50 year olds over the next 12 years. So it's not, you know, moving from age 50 to 60. It's it's the people who are age 50 are now have have less anxiety than those who did in 2010. Yeah. Um, which is who knows why why that is? I mean, but see, like, so obviously there's the COVID thing. You can see in, on the graph, there's this strange blip that happens uh, in 2020. Right. It goes down actually first, and then it spikes up. So who knows how to explain that? But, but if, you, if you looked at the line, it would probably like. If, my guess is they just weren't being diagnosed at that point because they were going not going to the doctor, et cetera. Hmm. Yeah, that's um, a good point. And uh, right. and because if you just look at the line, it would, you know, it would kind of yeah increase yeah proportionally. Yep. I am. So a millennial. Like, I'm firmly a millennial, by the way. Eighty one is the is the cutoff, and I'm eighty six. So. Well, that's what we all care about. That's what everyone wanted to know is make sure Doug is a millennial before we exactly, move on yep. to this conversation. So thank you for clarifying that for everybody. <laughs> uh, these lines kind of look like, I mean, it's not, it's interesting that like the COVID thing is just basically continuing the trend that was already there, right? Once you, once you mm -hmm. account for that little blip that we said, uh, it, it doesn't, it's not obvious from these graphs that COVID spiked everything more than it was already going to spike anyway. Um, which that, that would be surprising in itself if, if COVID didn't add to what was going on totally. uh, in some, in some meaningful way. Um, of course, there was also they're saying the, the the Great Recession of 2008 that began in 2008, um, and the kids having to grow up in the era after that, um, 
anyway, so so a lot of we'll get to this the speculation or the the objections to this thing in just a minute. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. And then and then the book, of course, gives gives many many uh, guidelines and things like that as far as how to parent. Um, they he mentions like the kind of overview of the book that there's this tidal wave. Then there's the decline of play 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 based childhood and the rise of phone based childhood. Those are sections two and three of the book. So they're saying basically that like the the playing usually with other kids uh, that that has basically been replaced by just being on the phone and and you know doing whatever people do on phones at each you know specific age and then finally they give a bunch of guidelines and and the guidelines are you know don't give a smartphone as a first phone don't give a smartphone until high school delay opening of social media accounts all that stuff which is like it's hard to believe that's even a book right it's just so everyone it's like common knowledge now that like that's just not good for kids so let's make sure they don't have too much of it mm -hmm. yeah so when i saw the chart at first i i thought is this just because people are talking about mental health more frequently, right? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, as Carmen points out, there's new DSM, which is like the guidelines for diagnosing mental disorders, uh, came out in 2013, so right around right before the spike. Um, the author addresses that, uh, and and you know I don't know how much we can trust this. I don't know, but it says the sudden increase wasn't merely due to heightened willingness to talk about mental illness, the rise was showing up in behavior as well, including self-harm and suicide. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think there's no doubt that people are talking about mental health in a new way now than they were even just 10 years ago. Um, and why is that? I mean, I didn't really realize that. I guess I know that people a lot of times like to like to be diagnosed as something so that then they can now have a label or an identity. But I don't think that just the stigma around around therapy is changing significantly. You don't feel that way? No, I hadn't noticed that. Hmm. Uh, so you just think people are more open now about health. Yeah. Mental health. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. It's there. Um, the other thing the author pointed out, I thought this was kind of interesting. He said it wasn't just that it was such a sweeping sort of thing that it even applied to non-users of social media. And I think the implication was that some science might miss this by looking at people who opt out of social media or who are in social media and then stop using it. And, if, and the science can look at them and say, look, their happiness doesn't actually change or go up or anything um, when they when they get off of social media and the author's point was that they had, there's this sort of network effect where once everybody's doing that and everyone's happiness is plummeting, you actually don't get any benefit by getting off of it because now you're an outsider and you no longer can get to socially connect with people. Uh, so these, you know, some sort of methods of science of doing that would, would say that, you know, it, it's sorry, would that, that if you tried to measure that, tried to show that um, it, it still, wouldn't show that these so so basically that, that would kind of trick you into thinking well social media is not the problem since so these people who opt out uh are are no no different but he's saying the whole thing is dragging down everyone's happiness even if you opt out of it so anyway all yeah. right before we move on to the criticisms um mm -hmm. why do you think like because I, I would i would I'm, i read this and i saw this and i would have i would have probably said that beforehand right like well i mean mm -hmm. maybe not to this degree in the charts but that that social media is bad for for yeah, everyone would say that, help, right? Even just, mine, right? Like, you know, yeah. I I have no doubt that I have some level of addiction to social media, uh, and that it rarely makes me feel good. Most of the time, it does the opposite, right? Um, right. And so, but like, I keep coming to it. And I'm a I'm a grown man. I know uh, some of our YouTube commenters think I'm a adolescent, but uh, I'm I'm not. I am <laughs> as old as I look, and uh, and 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 I have control. You know, I have self control, and I. I can I can turn off it or I can manage the way I use social media yet still I use it every day even though it doesn't make me feel very good right so right. of course as teens are developing and where they're even more concerned about uh, outward you know what people think of them and comparing themselves to other people like of course that's not going to be a healthy addition to people's lives at the same time like there are you know people who maybe have trouble finding friends in, in person or are in rural communities or feeling, uh, you know, like they don't connect with a lot of the people they have in person. They can find these communities online. You know, certainly the plant-based, this community here is awesome, right? Like, and, and, uh, and people can connect to vegans, and vegetarians in ways that they might not be able to in, in real life. So like just providing this platform for people to do that. And that can be incredibly healthy, right. Mm -hmm. And, and good. Um, but in general, I would say like, yeah, of course it's not healthy. So 
I don't know. Well, I don't remember where I was going with this question, but <laughs> but I guess like, you know, it, why do you think that social media isn't healthy? Or why, why do you think that this would be right? Why do I think that the author is correct when he asserts that yeah. social media is yeah, yeah. the problem? I mean, or do you, I guess? I don't know. I, I don't know. Let, let's get to this, to, this uh, to the criticisms and then, and then maybe we can make some sense of it. Uh, this is from nature.com and it's just a book review. Uh, it, it says, you know what I said, the book's going to sell a lot of copies because the guy's telling a very scary story about children's development. But second, he says, um, or, or the, the author of this, actually, I don't know. It's I'm saying he, uh, oh, it's, it's a woman, Candace L. Rogers. She says, uh, the book's repeated suggestion that digital technologies are re rewiring our children's brains and causing an epidemic of mental illness is not supported by science. And worse, that proposal, that bold proposal that social media is to blame might distract us from actually finding and, and responding to the real cause. Um, so she talks about the graphs and things that he's put in this, this stuff that kind of looks like science. Uh, but then she says that um, that the efforts or hundreds of researchers, myself included, have searched for the kind of large effects suggested by hate. Our efforts have produced a mix of no, small, and mixed associations. Most data are correlative, meaning, of course, that the social media is, or the happiness is certainly going down at the same time as social media is rising, um, but that there is nothing in here to establish that the social media is actually causing the decline in happiness. Um, I mean, of course, you could. She doesn't say this, but you could. You could argue. I mean, you could say maybe this is a decline in happiness from other stuff, and that's causing us to turn to social media as this outlet because it's this available dopamine hit that we can just go to all the time. Yeah. Um, and and maybe in that way, it's not. It's not that one's causing the other, but that they kind of kind of move in lockstep, and the you, you start being able to use it more as this outlet, and that too much of that causes the happiness thing to get worse. So uh, it's not clear, but the, the the interesting. It's just interesting that she says all these meta analyses and things. Uh, there's a, an analysis done in 72 countries that shows no consistent or measurable associations between well-being and the rollout of social media globally, which would, I think, as point out that like this is an American uh, thing, that, that Americans, people's happiness are going way down, maybe Western cultures in general, happiness going down. Uh, but if you look globally and you look at when social media hits a place, it doesn't necessarily cause the same decline in happiness. So we can't really say that's what's going on in the United States. It must be something different. Um, I don't know. It's just interesting. Like, like, like you kind of said, like it, the reason I want to still like go with my gut and she addresses exactly that. that like our gut can lead us astray. It can cause us to, to not really, it can cause our rational mind to be, uh, take a backseat to what is actually going on. And she said, when people thought the earth was flat, it was just common knowledge. Everyone knew the earth was flat because it just, that's the, that's our experience is, is experiencing that the earth is flat. And so she says, we could be doing the very same thing with the social media, just assuming that this is the problem. And we all think it's just self-evident that social media is terrible uh, when in fact, maybe in hindsight, we'll be able to say it wasn't that at all. It was something totally different than that. Uh, and that was just something that happened along with it. So um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's it's that, like you said, like the experience of actually doing the social media and feeling it impact your life, feeling what happens when you, you know, are on that all day or for an hour, a couple hours mm -hmm. and how, how unsatisfying that is. And how addictive it is at the same time, um, and how good it feels to go off of it for a while, and the stuff you can do. Like, I don't know. Like that experience makes it seem like, yeah, of course the social media is the problem. Like it's so. And, and watching kids do it, and watching the way they get stuck into it, I don't know. It just seems like it. It just seems like it would have to be. But if the science doesn't support it, I don't know. I like science, so I I have to kind of uh, I got to go with the the person who's criticizing this thing and say, until the science support this, we can't uh, assume this is really the problem. Yeah. Are there, do we know if there are, is there information around like activity level outside time, you know, things like that for adolescents right now? Like, is there any sort of redu reduction has social media or, or anything just kind of cause people to be less active, less engaged uh, in person? Yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen data. Actually, I have seen data. I don't have it in front of me right now, but uh, I've pulled a bunch of data on this on, on just like the, the changing amount of time we spend on different activities uh, mm -hmm. over the, you know, from, from now to kind of when we were kids and yes, it's so different, very, very different. Uh, and you can observe that, right. You can see that kids just, you don't see kids outside playing something in the street or riding bikes around very, very little of that. Mm -hmm. And, and, and why would they, right? This, and this isn't social media specifically, it could be due to that partly, but like there's video games, there's the whole TV stream. Right? We, we didn't used to be able to 
pick a show and watch it. You would watch whatever was on. And then yeah. once, once it got boring, you stopped doing that because <laughs> yeah, there was nothing right. on. <laughs> now that's just yeah. not, not existent. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, surely that's happening. And, and right. So I guess that's a good point. Like perhaps that is the very thing that is, I mean, not, I, I don't think that's the problem, but you could imagine that like, maybe, maybe that would be right. Maybe the problem is people aren't outside doing the same stuff they used to. It's this technology has replaced everything. And that's not necessarily just social media. That's a, mm -hmm. that's a technology in general thing. And diet shifts. I mean, there, there's just so many things. And then like, just, uh, add it. Yeah. The, the author of the, of the article that was talking that was trying to debunk this, uh, this social media theory was talked about just social unrest and, and economic stress and all kinds of things right. that are happening right. right now that uh, could be contributing to the, to people's anxiety. It, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just, I feel like everything is kind of compounding and it's hard to say this is the only world I've lived in, or this is the only time frame I've lived in. Right. So like, it's hard to say if this feels any different than it did 50 years ago for, for parents, our parents. Yeah. Um, but right. man, it just feels like there's a lot that kids are having to deal with right now. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Big media X clause says, nah, it's a social media. And vegan Stallion says social media is a disaster for humankind in so many ways. It's not a coincidence, but I mean, this is the interesting part of this conversation to me, right? Is that everyone feels that way on the surface, mm -hmm. but all of this science that the, that the reviewer brings up, uh, and I don't know how much science there is on the other side, and if the reviewer has some agenda here, just to point to the science that is saying. But it sounds to me that the reviewer is is on top of this, and has that they're trying to get to the bottom of this, and they're talking about scientists who, you know, I mean, really good scientists, obviously, right? There's these are massive studies being done, and tons of them that they cannot find a, a causality thing. And so, mm. I mean, you just have that has to have some meaning, right? We can't just say, well, our gut tells us this is social media, therefore that's what it is. Uh, I don't know. And I, and I don't, I don't have a side here. I don't know what's right, but very interesting to me that, that this can't be shown by science yet. Do you have, I mean, you have kids that are of social media age. Uh, do y'all have rules around it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and right now actually Holden is doing the, uh, the digital declutter thing. So all yeah. he can do is produce Instagram content. He can't consume any. And he, he self-imposed that we, we didn't make that rule for him. Uh, and he has like, he can go watch a YouTube video, but he can't watch a second video, which I suggested to him. That was my rule that that works really well. Cause then you kind of get out of the, the algorithm presenting you with the next thing that you can't resist. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, he's, he's realized he has to do that, but it's, I mean, all of his peers have, have no, nothing like that. Right. It's, and it's not, it, I don't, it's not that their parents aren't, don't care. I'm sure the parents are trying really hard to get the kids off it, but like everyone just spends all their time on whatever texting, video games, YouTube, like that's just what kids do. Even, even these really great soccer players that, that are all, you know, on his team. Uh, How does that just, feel to him? Like, does he, does he, does it keep him from making deeper friendships? You think? Cause they're just on their phone all the time. Yeah, I think so. But it also, that would keep them from making those friendships. Right. Cause like they're all on the phone. Like, yeah. yeah. Just I mean, like, like, are just, it's just not having the, the, the I don't know the deep friendships that we had. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, right. You see a bunch of teenagers, they'll go sit at a table and they'll all text each other for the, for the time that they're out of the restaurant or whatever. So it's yeah. not like they're not connecting. They're just doing it through this, through this intermediary. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know what the friendships thing. I don't know. Um, yeah. It's weird. Crazy. I don't know. So I kind of I kind of want to read this book, but I, now I'm like, it's gonna. That's the problem with these things. You read, you get all these arguments, and then they don't tell you about the other side. <laughs> so like, what, what's the point of me reading the Anxious Generation if now I know that all the science doesn't really support this? Right, right. I want to read a. I want to read a. Stand back and look at both sides. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. No, we're not going to get anywhere with this. I don't think anymore. Um, on to the Veggie Awards. What everyone's really here for. The, the Veggie, Veggie Awards. Awards. 2024 Veggie Award winners have been announced. Uh, I mean, these are fun. These are fun every year. If you hear about them, you go look up the yeah. brands. As I was reading this list, though, I started to feel, I didn't like how it made me felt. So I'm going to, I'm going to, let's start and we'll, and we'll, we're not going to go through all 35 categories, but we'll, we'll back up at some point. We'll say, what do you think about this? So here we go. Best vegan milk. Boom, ba -da -ba -da -boom. Oatly. That'd be Oatly, right? Everyone, all our, all our audience said they like silk so much, but silk got number two, Oatly number one. Almond Breeze, number three. 
I guess I'd put Oatly as my number one as if we're just talking about product quality and not ads or anything. But if we're saying best vegan milk brand, I'm I'm not putting Oatly there. I don't like them enough. I hate the ads. So they would not make my list for best vegan milk brand, but best product vegan milk, yes. Number one. Agreed. Uh, what do you think of this? What do you think of their their carton here? This promotional text for oat milk might be more <laughs> interesting if it actually said something about oat milk. Yeah, it would be more interesting, and it'd be it'd be actually useful to the consumer instead of re reading your dumb joke. Like, <laughs> I just hate that. Like, I hate their advertising. It's awful. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it, it doesn't. Even, it just it just is cringy. It doesn't even make me feel like ha ha little chuckle. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are you doing with the side of your package? All right, on to the next one. Best vegan ice cream. Ben and Jerry's is the winner. Oatly still made this list too, number three, and so delicious, dairy free. Got second. Oh, these third. Sorry. There's no way that's so delicious. I mean, I appreciate the fact that they've been around for a long time. There's just yeah. no way that it's nearly as good as Ben and Jerry's. They, they, make, they make non-coconut milk ice creams too, right? It's not all coconut. Mm. Well, I don't know. Maybe. I think it is. I think they make some like soy ones now. I, I don't think I've had that in a while. I think Ben and Jerry's is better than all these. I'm, I mean. Oh, hands it, down. Yeah. Although I will say, so delicious uh, ice cream sandwiches. Those are a hit in our house. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why is Ben and Jerry just so good about ice, good at ice cream that they can come in and say, we'll just make a vegan version and we'll just blow everybody away. Like, why, so. why isn't, why isn't the vegan specialist better than, I mean, I don't know, more interesting flavors, but it's just like creamier. It's more delicious. It tastes more like right. uh, what you'd expect in a good quality ice cream. Yeah. All right. On to the next best staple vegan cheese, Violife staple, meaning not artisan, which is the next category. Uh, number one, Violife, number two, chow creamery and number three, follow your heart. Diet does not make the list. Uh, despite their pyramid scheme, Ooh. the thing that they did this year. <laughs> maybe and because of their pyramid Maybe. Scheme. Or their new recipe or whatever else they've been doing. Not on the list at all as a staple. Chow creamery, I kind of like. I had their shreds on that pizza the other day, and it was pretty mm -hmm. good. I didn't I didn't hate it at all. Yeah. It's not my favorite thing, but. Chow's, Chow's my go-to. Yeah. Good. Uh, all right. Best artisanal vegan cheese. Miyoko's wins this one. Kite Hill. Number two and tree line cheese third. People talk about tree line a lot. I've only had it maybe once or twice. Uh, mm -hmm. That sounds like the right order to me. Miyoko's I think is the best as far as those things go, but I haven't had all that many. Yep. And then vegan cream cheese, Kite Hill number one, Vire Life two, Miyoko's Creamery three. So a lot of the same players here. Uh, and let's just knock out these next two because they're all so similar. Best vegan butter is Earth Balance, not Miyoko's. That's shocking to me. I don't know who in their right mind would say Earth Balance is better than Miyoko's. You've had both, Doug? Oh yeah, do you agree with me? Yeah, I would, I would definitely agree. I mean, I mean how could anyone? Earth Balance is way cheaper, probably half the price. Right, it's much cheaper, and maybe over time they've earned earned our trust by just kind of being mm -hmm. there through all those years when there was no Miyoko's. But it's just Miyoko's is so good. I don't know. I don't know how it's not number one. Yeah, I would agree with that. And Country Croc is that just their regular margarine? I think so. Yeah. Hmm. So that's like a non-vegan product. Period. That made it on the mm -hmm. list. I mean, a non not intentionally vegan, just, just the product. All right. Um, best vegan creamer, Silk. Number two, Califia Farms. Number three, Nut Pods. I don't care about vegan creamer. Does nope. anyone use this stuff? I'm sure somebody does. Seems I like don't. If you're like, if you're like evolved enough to be vegan, you're not putting <laughs> creamer in your coffee. You're just drinking good, good old coffee for the, for its. What if you want flavored coffee as like a little treat or lattes or something like that? then you need to upgrade your taste buds. You have a bad taste. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, this goes on and on and on. I can't get to a stopping point. They're all kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's, let's, we'll start skipping some best egg. No surprise here. Just egg. Number one, yo egg too. Is that the one that actually looks like the egg? Yes. Okay. There's that. And then there's crafty counter. Um, Best vegan burger, Beyond Meat wins over Impossible. Would you have said that, Doug? I would have said I can't really tell the difference. Yeah, I, I think this is uh, – I wouldn't have – there's no way I could tell the difference. But Impossible is in Burger King, and I think that's why I would give it that. That's why I end up eating it more. Mm. Uh, so I think I'd go with it. But they point out that Carl's Jr. has uh, has Beyond – and that new Beyond recipe, which they don't mention here, but that's that will that will sway the pendulum a little bit to me. Best vegan chicken they give to Gardein, then Impossible Foods, then Daring Foods. 
they fix they picture the uh the ultimate plant-based chicken fillets. We end up buying these things a lot. Not not this not the fillets, but the chicken fingers or whatever they are, tenders of the Gardein in this new yeah, ultimate brand of theirs. That ends up being like always kind of a decent price or it's on sale a lot. So we end up getting that fairly often for the kids. Pretty good. I don't know if I've ever had these. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's it's remarkably good compared to how it used to be. I say it's fine. It's actually it's actually very much like real chicken. Um would you ever make like a chicken sandwich like this? Have you ever done that? No, I, I really haven't. I'll eat two tenders maybe at the most. I just don't want a whole patty of that stuff. Uh, I don't know why, because now and then I'll eat a Whopper. Hmm. What about you? You ever get those? Eat those things? No, I don't. I don't. But I mean, it looks good. Like I would order it. Yeah, I mean, it's good. Like if you make it for the kids to eat a nugget or a chicken finger, dip it in some barbecue sauce or some buffalo sauce. Like that's yeah. really good. Uh, but then you kind of get tired of it. At least me, I don't want too much of it. I mean, we do nuggets. Our kids do nuggets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Vegan seafood, still Gardein, even though there's been all this news about new companies and things. Gardein is still winning it with their vegan fish plates, which those fish plates are so much like the chicken to me. They just have a slightly different uh, breading. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's basically the same stuff. Uh, then Good Catch, which we like. And then Conscious Foods, who I think is making the vegan sushi and stuff that's in the frozen section, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, all right. The list goes on, but Louisville jerky yeah. does win best vegan jerky. So there's that one. Uh, Jelly slice. Yeah. yeah. Best vegan jerky. You can't get beyond me jerky. Man. I don't even know if they made hmm. Louisville vegan jerky is legit. I yeah, really it, like it. It's not really like jerky. It's so like chewy, spongy, yeah. mm-hmm. but it's still good. It's still really good. And it disappears if we ever get it. We just, people just eat it up fast. Mm-hmm. Here's here's my this thing what I felt about this. I'm reading this thing. You look at these pictures and you go down the list. Like it, it just feels like this is what veganism has become. Maybe it's because it's on a publication and it's a commercial thing. But like we've just talked about junk food right now for for the past ten minutes, and totally. named brand after brand after brand. And everyone has experience with all these things. Not, not every brand here, but most of these, all the category, each category, somebody's you know we've got a favorite brand. All these things. Like we eat these a lot of time. These, these, this is like, even if we don't eat the fake meats all that often, this stuff just has crept into our lives. Whereas 15 years ago, 10 years ago, this was 5% of my total calories was this stuff. And mostly it was just. But how terrible food. would a list be like best bean? Right. Like exactly. That? Right. You can't, you can't really make it different. And that's what this list is going to be, I guess. And when you get down to the people and the influencers and the podcasts mm-hmm. and the books, like that's, then it's different. That's, this is all the products and this is the. I guess the interesting part to talk about, but like, I don't know. I see. I, that's where I disagree. Like, I, I think that it would be what I think would be maybe more interesting would be most influential book uh, of the year, or you know, best cookbook, obviously, best podcast, like um, biggest story, um, yeah, you know, that that type of thing more than uh, more than favorite butter. Because I mean, I bet that Earth Balance wins this every year. Be my guess. Yeah, I don't, you know. that's a good point. You're right. So we should have started no, at the bottom of the list instead. Yep. Uh, I don't know. It just does. It just feels like this is this is like on their own. All these things are good together. It's just gross. I mean, this is just so much like fake junk. And I guess great for animals that that's happening. But if our diet loses the like by default really healthy label, I, I don't mm-hmm. know if that's so good for animals because I think people are gonna. There's this backlash, and we're already seeing it. So I don't know. I just I don't like all this stuff. It's just it's just it's just too much. I I want to I want to like drastically get it out of my life. So I don't know how I'm going to do that. Wow. That's a bold move. I mean, why? it's like the social media thing. This stuff has just taken over what we eat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I need like a challenge of some kind. This is no fake vegan products for a month. I mean, really, it's just processed food, right? Like if you just cut out all the processed food. Then... You just cut all, yeah, you just do all, all whole foods mm-hmm. for a while. See how you feel. All whole foods, no social media, digital declutter. Get back to a normal life. Then we don't need the great reset that I've been saying with the, the great flood situation. We just, <laughs> That's individually, great we just individually go do our own reset. All what, right. if we, what, if we, what if we led a great reset of our own? Uh, a, a, like a 30-day great reset of the, the touched on everything. The touched on social media, the touched on mm-hmm. uh, diet, the touched on um, sleep trackers, reset away from all that. <laughs> yeah, the Plant-Based Morning Show, great reset. Or great, we call it the great flood. We all just... <laughs> um, I, I got, here's, great. 
Here's what we should do, though, is we should uh, we should make our own awards, morning show awards, and uh, focus on non non products. Yeah, you're right. We should have plant-based morning show awards that doesn't. We have like best vegetable, and it could be carrots, broccoli, <laughs> best grain. <laughs> you think it'd be good? <laughs> Did you get a lot of media attention. Got a lot of links. I think so. Yeah. No, I mean, I think we could do better. That's what I'm saying. It's like we could do like biggest story, your most influential story. Uh, you know, uh, best uh, breakout vegan star of the year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I think. I mean, um, I, I'm joking, but you could do. You could do breakout vegetable of the year. You could do. You know, up and coming yeah. fruit. And uh -huh. and people, there'd be serious things about it, right? Because the the marketing or whatever the maybe totally. the weather. Yeah. I don't know. Uh huh. All right, we should do that. That'll be our goal that. for the for the year. At the end of this Emory's year, we'll have a best, besties award. You, you made Emery's day here. Matt is coming around to my side of the plant based diet, in spite of all the teasing. <laughs> Maybe, but I'm not putting salt and oil yet on my cannot eat these things list. But all this fake stuff, I'm I'm with you. I gotta I gotta do a long road trip today, and I'm I'm going to avoid getting any Burger King or anything like that junk. Wow, you should have started here? this tomorrow, Matt. I should have waited. I'm trying to figure out where I ate on the way down here. I can't. I can't think of it. It'll come to me. It wasn't Burger King. It wasn't Taco Bell. It wasn't Chipotle. Oh well, I have to. I have to remember what we talked. All right, let's get to this other stuff real quick, and then we'll then we'll get out of here. Um, all right, let's do the podcast thing, Doug. Okay. Number three. Drum roll. I think number three was Rich Roll. Yes. Surprising. Uh, pardon me. A little surprising. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Best new vegan product. We should do that one. Best new vegan product. Yeah. Okay. What is it? I'm not go ahead and start it. I'm not there, but I'll find it. It's eat meaty. So this is all vegan products purely. Yeah. Okay. I like meaty. You yeah. go ahead. Eat, eat meaty. Oh, well, eat, yeah. That's they put that there. It's just meaty. It's called meaty. meaty. Meaty whole cut steak and chicken. Number two. Oat milk chocolate truffles from from Lint. Lint Lindor, and then Impossible Foods beef hot dogs, which no one's actually had. Are those even out? Yeah. No. <laughs> well, that's a joke then. Well, come on. Okay. All right. Podcast. Number three. Rich Roll. Would have thought he'd be number one, honestly. And mm -hmm. I thought the proof might be up here, but it's not. Number two, Brown Vegan Podcast. Um, I don't know that one. Who is that? I'm reading who that is now. Um don't know. Can't find it. No, and their website doesn't have an about page on it that I can find. So don't know. Um, number one, here we go. <laughs> Nutrition, Nutrition facts. facts with Dr. Gregor. With Dr. Gregor. Is that even a podcast? I love Dr. Gregor. Is that even a serious podcast? I don't know. 10 to 25 minute episodes is what he says. I don't know. So it's different from just the videos that are on his uh, that are on his site. It's different from those five to eight minute videos. I don't know a single person who listens to, to Nutrition Back to Dr. Rigger podcast. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Right. I, I find I, like I, said, I love Rigger. Right? I love his stuff. I just, I just don't know. If, I didn't know the podcast was was even really a thing. No. We got I, think that was, I think we, we won. Got, we I think we got it, and they didn't want to give it to us, so they just swapped in yeah. Dr. Rigger. Yeah, everybody loves. Just, can't hate Dr. Crash. It's your fault. Yeah. They were never going to win one of these. Right. And that's why we're making our awards, our really awards. That is all real foods and really things the really <laughs> uh i like this that actually more officially declared with that war declared all right really we will not win anything all these banned from our thing <laughs> can't even be voted can't even be written in uh -huh. all right let's make it happen we're okay. gonna and and you know what's gonna be best podcast on the release yeah ours ours <laughs> i'm <sorry. laughs> Okay, Big Media X Clause says, I do listen to Dr. Gregor. It's super informational. His podcast is awesome. Uh, okay. I mean, he says, don't hate on Dr. Gregor. I wasn't at all. I love Gregor. I think he's fantastic. Uh, but I just think we were robbed on this podcast thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh. Uh, anything else worth discussing here, Doug? I mean, they have favorite celebrity. Oh, Sam Turnbull, uh, Craving Vegan, number one book, Plant Based on a Budget, number two, Healthy Girl Kitchen, Danielle Brown, number three. And then I promised Carly would be mentioned. She is uh, the favorite TikToker, the second place favorite TikToker behind Alexis Nicole. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and and Todd Anderson is number three. I don't know. I don't know those two. I just know Carly. Uh, here's something. What favorite YouTuber, vegan YouTuber, Rose Lee, cheap lazy vegan, who is uh, who takes compliment essential every day as a compliment partner. That. And uh, second place, Ed Winters, Earthling Ed, does the same thing. Mm, ready to go. That's good. We got a uh, undeclared our... war on the Veg News for this. We're declaring war. No, I undeclared it because they because of that. Oh, uh, undeclared. <laughs> All right, uh, and athletes: Lewis Hamilton, Cam Newton, Morgan Mitchell. Who's Morgan Mitchell? Hmm, I don't know. Why do I not know? Well, their Instagram page doesn't even look to me right now. All right, uh, I think that's it. That brings us to the end. I still cannot remember what I got for lunch on the way down here. Uh, it's mind blowing to me that I can't figure out what that was. She's a track ac- track athlete from Australia. Olympian. I know what I got for lunch. Subway. That's why I couldn't remember because it was who who goes to Subway anymore. But I suggested <laughs> to my daughter. She was like, Subway, we can do that. And I was like, Yeah, we can do that, no problem. And we went there and got veggie subs, just the straight up veggies with some mustard and. Uh, Olive, olive oil and vinegar. And, and it was olive. probably very disappointing, wasn't it? No, it was, it was pretty good. I don't know. I got a foot long. It was, it was a little, I don't know. It's not great. But it was okay. It was fresh. Tasted like a good salad kind of with bread. Are foot longs still $5 or is that a thing in the past? I think it was more than that. Maybe on certain days they are. I think I probably paid about 6 for this one. Hmm. So there you go. All right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, uh, thank you everyone for attending. Thank you all for all the comments. Um, again, I must clarify. I love Dr. Gregor. I hope people don't think that I'm saying Gregor's not good. He's fantastic. Um, you just love our podcast. More. But where's the plant-based morning show in that list? Right. I actually don't think we deserve to win. I'm, I'm kind of just kidding. I think we're what? probably, <laughs> I'm not sure how we did in the voting. I think we're probably about the number 10 on the, on the list of like good vegan podcasts right now. Yeah. Simon Hill, definitely better. Rich Roll, definitely better. Gregor better. I mean, based on how I know about Gregor, I don't know about the podcast, but sure it's better. <laughs> and then what was the but other what, one? What is best podcast, podcast really better than yeah. What? What is best podcast you mean? Big, big media X clause comes to our defense here. We're the we are the best. Eleven a.m. Eastern time vegan live stream. Yes. That meets every Tuesday through Thursday <laughs> award. <laughs> exactly. At this at this specific time slot, three days a week. There's nothing better. Yeah. <laughs> all right well that's it thanks everyone we will be back tomorrow with carly assuming that all goes as planned which it should uh i'll be in a new location but otherwise the show will go on all right thanks all right. everybody have a great day talk to you later